Hey, it's me, John Park. I got a question about showing how MIDI controllers work with the black box. Um, so driving from USB MIDI uh, with a keyboard or whatever, but in this case, I'm gonna use a Yamaha Reface and I'm plugging USB MIDI into the black box, which serves as a USB host. Uh, and that's as straightforward as plugging it out and in on the black box. You can see I've got, that's the device input there. And so now the black box acts as a MIDI, USB MIDI host uh, for a class compliant device, which is super cool because a lot of controllers don't have classic MIDI and this allows you to plug it in and use it. Uh, and so I'm going to show how you set that up, uh, how you decide what channel of MIDI is going to control which sounds uh, or which cells of the samples on the black box. And also uh, show how you can do some polyphony and other cool things with the uh, keyboard driving those samples and it's uh, going to repitch and time shift those samples as you pick different notes on the keyboard. Uh, so to get started, I've got my keyboard here set to uh, transmit on MIDI channel 3 right now. And here's a sample that I've pulled up from uh, one of the sample packs on the black box. Okay, that's what it looks like. Let me take a look, there's the waveform. You can play it there. And uh, this will work with things in trigger mode, in toggle mode and in gate mode. I'll leave this in trigger mode. Uh, leave the ADSR envelope alone. And then this page here, you use the info button or the back button to kind of go between the pages on the cell that you're in. This button uh, or this little quadrant here, I can use the rotary encoder to pick a channel. So right now I'm going out over MIDI channel three um, and that's what I have the keyboard set to. So if we head back and look at pads mode, when I press middle C on the keyboard, I'll get the sample as it was recorded. And you'll also notice we have velocity sensitive. You can repitch it. Oh, that sounded horrible. But the cool thing you'll notice is that I switched this into polyphonic mode. So in the cell with this uh, sample picked, when we go into the info screen second page up at the top, you can pick between mono and poly. So I decided to play this one as poly. So uh, here you can hear it. Okay, so that's one um, cell that's playing over MIDI channel three. So then what I've decided to do is go in and set a couple of other channels. So here's what I'm gonna play on channel two. So this is a toggle. And that is for this wave file right here. And it's gonna repeat. Uh, and so here I've set MIDI channel to two. So again, just like you can with the keys on screen, we can do that. And we can stop that with the stop button here since it's gonna just play continuously. Uh, and then for the third channel, I set up, oh, we already did that one. So channel one, I'm going backwards. So we can take a look at this. Here's the sample. And this is also a triggered sample. And I've got that set to MIDI channel one. And you can do some funky stuff. So I'm gonna take the keyboard down an octave with this switch. Time stretching and pitch shifting that. And so now I can use the controller if I want to play these different MIDI channels just by 
without selecting them on the keyboard and I'm leaving the black box alone just to play. Okay, and then uh, let's do one from scratch. So if I head to, let's say channel four on my MIDI controller, it's not connected to anything right now, and I'll just grab the uh, kick drum. And we can pitch that too. So uh, right now it's mono, which makes sense, triggered, and we'll set that to MIDI channel four. So you can have 16 channels outputting from your controller and 16 uh, different cells being triggered by those channels. reason you want to start pitching those samples too it's pretty simple to do with whatever MIDI controller you've got uh, so that is pretty much it it's it's quite simple uh, you can trigger other things uh, using MIDI and I think there might be a couple of CC messages available but mostly it's just note on note off uh, and I think you get the full range pretty much of the keyboard some of it will sound weird so if we pitch this way high that's our kick drum or way low barely hear it. And you might want to play both the screen and the controller. And you can of course record these into sequences. Uh, and then play live on top of them, or you could be recording this.